Hey everyone, I'm Blessed Beats with Soundation. Today I'm going to show you how to transform a mix that sounds dull and uneven. into a tight, clear, and energetic mix. All by using compressors and limiters. But first, what exactly are compressors and limiters? Compressors and limiters are essential tools for shaping the dynamics of a sound. A compressor balances the sound by making the quiet parts louder and the loud parts quieter, while a limiter helps increase the volume without making it distort. Both are powerful tools that, when used well, can take your mix to a professional level. So let's dive in and learn how to use them. To start, let's take a look at the drums in this mix. Right now, they sound a bit weak and boring. Adding a compressor can help bring out more energy and attitude. First, find the drum channel and click on this icon to open the bottom panel. Here, you can add the compressor effect. When you play the audio, you'll see a visual of the sound waves and how the compressor affects the audio. You can start by selecting a preset. Let's go with heavy rock drums. This is a great way to start using compression if you're having trouble wrapping your head around it. Now let's go over the first setting that you should understand. Threshold. The threshold is the level at which the compressor starts working. In the visualizer, the white line represents the threshold. Any sound above this line will be compressed, while anything below it won't be affected at all. You'll also see a red line representing the gain reduction. This shows how much compression is being applied. Watch the red line move as the sound crosses the threshold, showing you that compression is happening. The ratio controls the intensity of the compression for sounds that cross the threshold. Starting from zero, raising the ratio gradually increases the compression. Higher ratios squash the sound more. Since compression reduces the overall volume, you can compensate by adjusting the output gain. To ensure we're not just making the sound louder, you can use the volume meter to level match. Switch the meter to RMS, toggle the compressor's bypass button, and adjust the output gain to match the original loudness. This helps us hear the true effect of the compression without the louder is better bias. Check out our video on volume for more details about level matching. And notice how, with the compressor on, the quieter parts of the drums are brought up, giving them more energy and smack. Listen to the difference. Here's the before. And here's the after. Now let's switch to peak mode on the volume meter. You'll notice that the drums are now peaking higher. This happens because the compressor is not catching every sharp transient. Those are the quick, high energy spikes at the start of the sounds, like the initial hit of a drum. To handle these stray peaks, we can add a limiter after the compressor. A limiter is similar to a compressor, but instead of just reducing peaks, it completely prevents any sound from going above a certain level. Here's how it works. The limiter threshold sets the ceiling of the limiter. Anything above this level will be pulled back while everything else stays the same. The threshold is already set to a good point, so we don't need to adjust it. In this case, the limiter doesn't alter the overall sound. It just keeps those sudden peaks in check giving us more control and headroom in our mix. Now let's look at balancing elements. In this hi-hat and clap loop, the clap is noticeably louder than the hi-hats. To even them out, we can use compression to reduce the clap's volume while keeping the hi-hats consistent. Start by adjusting the threshold so that the compressor mainly affects the clap. Then turn up the ratio for stronger compression. You still hear the clap pushing through, which is because of the attack setting. 
The attack time determines how quickly the compressor starts working once the sound goes above the threshold. Here it's set to 10 milliseconds, meaning there's a slight delay before the compressor kicks in, letting some of the clap come through first. To catch more of the clap, lower the attack. In the visualizer, you can now see the clap's original level in dark gray and the compressed level in lighter gray. It's more balanced with a hi-hat. Even with a fast attack, some sounds have such sharp transients that a compressor alone can't control them. For example, in this click and shaker loop, the initial click is too strong compared to the shaker. This is where a limiter comes in handy. Limiters react faster than compressors, so they're ideal for taming sharp transients like this one. To balance the click with a shaker, simply lower the limiter threshold until the click is under control. This reduces the peak volume of the click, making it feel more even with the shaker. Here's the before. Take a look at the volume meter to see the difference in peak level. And here's the after. Sometimes instead of taming a transient, you might want to emphasize it to make it pop more. For example, if this clap sounds too flat, we can add some compression to add some snappiness. Start by adding a compressor to the clap and setting up the threshold and ratio as usual. Now, notice what happens when we adjust the attack. At a very fast attack, the compressor flattens out the clap, reducing its transient. But when we increase the attack to around 10 to 15 milliseconds, we allow the initial snap of the clap to pass through before the compressor kicks in. This lets us keep the body of the clap compressed while giving the transient that extra boost. Then add some output gain to bring the overall sound up. This amplifies the transient along with the rest of the clap so it sounds snappier and more dynamic. With this approach, we can shape the transient sound the way we want it to. We can also use the release to shape the tail of the sound. Release time controls how long it takes for the compressor to return to normal after the sound drops below the threshold. With a short release, watch how the gain reduction immediately jumps back up. A longer release holds the gain reduction a bit longer, compressing the body of the clap. I want it to be back to normal by the time the next clap hits. This lets the reverb tail rise in volume as the compression fades. And this creates a lift to the end of each clap while also adding a bit of groove. Let's move on to shaping the attack of this electric organ bass, which currently sounds a bit too soft at the start of each note. We can use a compressor to give it more punch and impact. Add a compressor and set the threshold and ratio to begin compressing the sound. Now, increase the attack time to about 20 to 30 milliseconds. By setting a longer attack, we allow the initial punch of each note to pass through before the compressor kicks in, making the bass sound more defined and powerful. Now let's boost the sustain of weaker sounds like this xylophone and kodo. Compression can help bring out the body of these instruments, making them feel more lively and full. Let's start with the xylophone. Add a compressor, set up the threshold and ratio, and give it a fast attack to catch transients, but leave a bit of snappiness. Then adjust the release to keep the beginning of each note compressed while allowing the sustain to bounce back. Then when you're increasing the output, you're essentially boosting the sustain. Follow up with a limiter after the compressor to keep sudden volume spikes in check. Here's a tip. The order of effects can matter a lot. Notice how the compressor is placed after the reverb on this track this allows the reverb to be compressed along with the instrument, and it sounds like this. Placing the compressor before the reverb creates a completely different effect. Let's apply the same approach to the Kodo as well. Here's the before.
and the after. Both instruments now sound stronger and they sit better in the mix. You can also use a limiter to boost up the sustain of the sound. Let's add a limiter to the synth loop. By increasing the gain and lowering the threshold, we can refocus the sound and put more emphasis on the sustain of the sound instead of the attack. Let's talk about vocals, which often need extra attention to stay consistent and clear. In this vocal track, you'll notice that this part is too loud, while this part is too quiet. To even out these dynamics, we'll use a popular technique called dual compression. You can guess what that is. Instead of relying on one compressor, we use two. This approach allows each compressor to work less and differently, making the sound a bit more natural. For the first compressor, set the threshold just above the quietest parts so it catches most of the louder moments. Use a fast attack and release to quickly handle peaks and smooth out any sudden jumps in volume. Since we're using two compressors, you can keep the ratio in the middle for more gentle compression. Increase the output gain to compensate for any volume reduction. For the second compressor, set it up similarly, but with a slower attack and release to achieve a slightly more relaxed effect. This helps keep the overall volume steady without flattening the vocals too much. By layering these two compressors, we get a smooth and balanced vocal that sits evenly in the mix without losing its natural dynamics. The mix is starting to come together. Wow. Now, let's make it sound even more cohesive with what's called glue compression. And you can guess what that is. That's not what it is. This technique uses a single compressor on multiple sounds at once to give them a more unified level. We will apply glue compression on the master channel so that it affects the entire mix. Open the master channel by clicking here or zero. Every track runs through this channel so any effect we add here will impact the whole mix. Add a compressor. The key to glue compression is subtlety but start by setting the ratio a bit higher just so you can hear what the compressor is doing clearly. Then adjust the attack and release to enhance the track's groove. A good starting point is an attack of around 20 milliseconds and a release of around 100 milliseconds. But tweak these settings to suit your track's feel. Once the compression feels right, dial back the threshold and ratio to make it less intense. The gain reduction line should barely move, just a light touch to bind the mix together. Lastly, make sure to level match the output. Listen to how the mix sounds more solid with this gentle compression. Now that our mix is balanced and cohesive, let's do the final step, using a limiter to make the entire track louder without causing distortion. The most crucial part of mastering. Add a limiter to the master channel at the end and set the threshold to around minus one decibel. This is a common standard for streaming platforms to make sure your track doesn't clip. Next, increase the gain to make the track as loud as you want, but be careful not to overdo it as pushing the limiter too hard can cause unwanted distortion. Find a balance where the track is loud but still clean. Finally, check the master channel to make sure it's peaking at minus one decibel and you should be good to go. Again, for more details on this, check out our volume 
tutorial. Let's take a listen to the final before and after. First with all the compressors and limiters turned off and then with them turned back on. Notice how the track feels fuller, more balanced and more professional. And there you have it. That's how you can fix a mix using dynamics effects like compressors and limiters. Remember, compression isn't always necessary on every element in the mix, especially with electronic music where samples and synth sounds are already processed a bunch before. If it sounds good, trust your ears and leave it as it is. In this video, we applied strong compression to make each effect easy to hear, but a lot of times you just wanna be in general more subtle with it. For those cases, just decrease the ratio. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe for more mixing and production tips.